is a video to help you on regression analysis along with some trend analysis. I'm going to break this video into two parts. Part one will be creating scatter plots and overlaying a trend line on each chart. What we're going to be doing in this uh, example is we're going to try to predict sales price either using square feet as a predictor or distance to the nearest school as a predictor. After we finish doing the scatter plots, we'll go into part two, which is conducting regression analysis uh, to determine if either variable is useful in predicting sales price. Part one is simply going to give you a visual. It's not going to give you any statistical verification whether or not square foot or distance to the nearest school are useful in predicting the sales price. So let's go and get started. And first thing I'm going to do is go into insert uh, scatter. And I've got the scatter plot right here. I'll go in and select the data. And for the, um, this is the x-axis, the horizontal. So I'm going to add the predictor, the y variable. So I'm going to go in and add the series name will be the sales price. I'm going to go in and get rid of that uh, information and highlight the sales column, sales price column. The x-axis values will be, uh, one at a time, I'm going to do square feet first, do OK, and OK. And what I could do is I could come in and add uh, the x-axis title. Uh, in this case of expediency, I'm going to just go ahead and show you how to go in and add the trend line to, you, to it. So I'm going to click on any of the data points in here, then right click. Add a trend line. On this trend line, there's a lot of different ways of doing forecasting. Uh, we're going to keep it simple in this class. We'll stay with linear. I'm also going to go in and display the equation on the chart, display the R squared value on the chart, and we'll do close. So notice now, I'm going to drag this on over so you can see it a little bit better. You can see that we've come up with an equation uh, to help you understand this is uh, Y, you're trying to predict sales price is equal to 135.87 times X, which in this case is square feet, minus 13,890. The R squared is 0.9395, which is excellent. You want it to be close to 100%, uh, which means that the entire fluctuation in sales price can be explained square feet. In this case, it's saying that 93.95% of the change in sales price can be explained by the respective changes in square feet. We still don't know if this is a really good predictor. We assume that it is because of the high R squared, but we'll figure that out in part two later on. I'm going to do another um, uh, chart for distance to the nearest school. So I'll go into Insert, Scatter. And notice it overlay a little bit on this, but we'll take care of that in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the data. On this case, I'm going to add the series. Again, the series name will be sales price. Series X value, I'll go and do that really quick. And take care of the distance to the school. For the Y value, I'm going to go in and select the sales price again. And again, that stupid one gets involved a little bit in front of it. So let's get rid of that. Uh, let me go and just get rid of all this. It happens. So go back to the sales price. So I'll get this highlighted. Do OK and OK. I'm going to drag this off a little bit where we can see this a little bit better. So we have these side by side. Um, in this case, we're going to go in again, select one of the data lines, data points, add the trend line, both of these like usual, and close, bring the equation out. And you can see, in this case, this really is a scatter plot. We've got a line plotted. It's not real good. Um, you can see the R squared is very, very small. And we'll see how all this works out when we go and do the regression analysis. So let's go and do the regression analysis. So I'm going to go into data and data analysis. 
go down to regression, do OK. The input Y range will be what we're trying to predict, which in this case is the sales price. I'm going to include the label. That will help us label the uh, equation later. The X range will start off with square feet. Notice we have the labels here that we need to check off, that's why I've included the labels. The I'm not going to worry about this. If I was teaching statistics, I would go into more information about what the residuals are, etc. But I do want to click on the output range, click where I want it to be. I'm going to go over to Price and Square Foot tab, or recreate that, click where I want it to be, and do OK. And now we have, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and um, automatically uh, make the columns wider. I'm going to go in and change uh, the comma style so it'll be two decimal places. And what we have is, here's the equation. We've seen this equation before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference this sales price equals the square feet and I'll put down here square feet and then over here, I'll reference the coefficient. So in this case, what we're saying is the sales price is equal to 135.87 times the square feet plus the y-intercept of negative 13,890. We've seen this before. I'm going to go back on over and grab that chart. I'm going to grab this chart, Control-X to cut it. Go back on over here, and we're going to paste it over in this situation. And notice, here's the equation, here's the equation. So we have agreement on what we've done in this situation. Uh, what the regression analysis does for us is it gives us uh, these p-values, um, basically down here and up here, which shows how powerful this equation is in predicting sales price. Again, you want your p-value to be under 0 0.05. I'm not going to worry about the p-value for the intercept. That's really irrelevant for the situation. What we're concerned about is the p-value for the overall equation or the p-value for the individual variable. And again, if they're under 5%, we're in pretty good shape on that as far as sales price being a useful, not uh, sales price, but square foot as being a useful predictor. Let's come on back on over here and we'll do one for the distance to the nearest school. So again, I'll go back to data, data analysis. Here's the regression. So the Y range is still the same. I'm going to change the X range now to distance to the nearest school. So I've got that situated. I'm going to change where we're going to go to. So in this case, I'm going to go to price and distance click where I want it to be, do OK. Uh, we must have, a, oh, I'm trying to get the, um, forgot the variables for the X range. So I'm going to go back up to the distance to the nearest school. So I should be going to check now. Got that situated and do OK. And we've got this pasted on over here. Again, I'm going to go in and change all the decimals to two places. Do the auto fit on the columns. So if we look at it, again, we're going to look at the equation. So we're doing sales price is equal to, um, let me go ahead and do the reference equals the two six, no, the 1,998.6 negative, and that's times the distance. And that will also be equal to over here with the intercept. So let's go back and see how this corresponds with what we had done before. Here's the, equation, here's the chart. I'm going to cut it. Go back on over here and we'll paste it in over here. And notice the equation, 216 negative. I'm um, sorry, positive. There's 216 positive. There's a negative 1998, negative 98. And now we can see the difference in what we were talking about with p-values. 
this p-value is very, very high. Um, in this case, it's basically saying that distance to the nearest school is not useful uh, in predicting um, the sales price for the houses. Um, so basically, distance to the nearest school would not be used uh, by realtors or whoever that wants to kind of estimate sales price. But as you can see over on the square footage, it is a very useful predictor um, in this case. And if you want to interpret this, it's basically saying that for every additional square foot in size of a home, you would expect that the sales price to go up by $135.87. Again, we're expecting that to be the case. Again, this is just a prediction. It's not going to be a perfect prediction unless the R squared was 100% which we can see it is not. It's only 0.9395, which is still very good. Notice the R squared over here. Also, if we increase the decimal, you can see it's the exact same R squared as what we had before. The reason for doing the um, regression analysis is basically you're getting a lot more information by having the p-values uh, to give you the information whether or not it's a useful uh, predictor or not. I hope this all helps you in understanding regression and analysis along with some trend uh, lines. Uh, you can see how they go hand in hand. I uh, hope this helps. Have a great day.